here with Jake Nichol, who's the founder of Threadless. Welcome Hi. to Make Change TV. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks it has me. been a great presentation um, you did earlier this morning. So can you please share with me shortly about the story of uh, Threadless? How did you start up the company? Yeah, I started Threadless uh, about 12 years ago as a member of this online creative community called Dreamless. Um, it was kind of a hobby of mine. It was my, my creative contribution to this forum. Um, and the idea is simple. It's just post designs into this forum and I'll print the best ones on t-shirts and posters and stuff like that. Um, and today it's much larger and mm. a huge community of artists, 200,000 artists around the world have submitted designs to yeah. Threadless and, and then we make products out of the best ones and sell them, and reward the artists for their work. Yeah. So you have been 12 years now and now looking back building up a community during the 12 years, what is the most challenging, you know, things do you have experience in? Um, it's definitely been, I mean, there's over the 12 years so many stories of things that have happened, but um, definitely the community is the fuel of everything. Like without, without the community of artists submitting designs, we wouldn't really have anything. No. Um, so a lot of the work that we do is, you know, keeping our community really happy and bringing on new members as much as we can. And, um, so it's all about making sure we're, we're creating exciting opportunities for, for our artists. So um, we do a lot of partnerships with other companies that would be exciting for artists, you know, to get their, we always put the artists first really on everything. Um, artist name is printed on every product we create um, and the artists are celebrated every step of the way. You also have a background more or less of, of an artist because the way I see also you you implement the philosophy of being an artist into development of your company in many ways. Um, so it's, it's not about you know having a five years plan, tuk tuk tuk, or it's oh, more right. like being open and creative and you know exploring um, yeah, as an artist. I mean, yeah, we definitely we don't really like having five year plans, but no. um, we do like trying to be proactive about finding stuff for the artists to do because um, that's one thing we struggle with is like as artists we're all we're very reactive to the situation um, and we want to be able to keep stay nimble and be able to do new things and stay fresh and everything but we also want to be um, don't want to only be reacting to things that come up we want to be like proactively out there finding new things so that's been a weird balance for us too if that makes sense. Yeah, that does, does make sense. Yeah. So when you talk about, I mean, this is, for me, it's also very much innovative, you know, the way you operate is really community-based design, uh, which is totally, you know, different. So, so how do you view innovation in your company? Um, What's innovation for you? Well, I think the best innovations come from people who don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's actually qu quite um, great. I think innovation comes from amateurs, like people who have never really dealt with the situation. So they're approaching it with completely fresh eyes. Mm. So I like to step outside my comfort zone as much as possible. Yeah. Like once I figure something out, I kind of like lose interest in it, you mm. know, and I move on to the next thing. And that's been really great about Threadless stumbling into this business is, you know, I didn't go to business school and I've yeah. been learning about business in real life. and. Um, as the company grows, I'm learning new skills like how to keep our culture um, in a growing company. And, um, and I like to just do these things myself rather than looking to the experts for it because I feel like when you go into a situation with fresh eyes, that's when you can be the most creative and offer a new perspective. Um, and that's where innovation comes from, I think. Yeah. So do you also see any challenges, implications about approach in the way that, that uh, um, being open and you know learning by doing is there any implications that comes to that um, yeah I mean I think one of the challenges people will have in um, just learning by doing is that you can't predict the outcome early on so um, sometimes it won't work sometimes it will and you, you really don't have a way of knowing it until you start doing it and that can be a struggle for people to um, except, you know, like people want to have it figured out before they start rolling. And so dealing with uncertainty and maybe yeah. it's also about trusting as well, um, you know. Yeah. yeah, I think those are two things that 
people would struggle with for sure. Yeah. But you're not struggling with that, or? Um, well, it's easy for me to not struggle when it worked out with things like Threadless, but I could see it being if you keep doing it and it doesn't work out. Like, mm -hmm. I could see that. We, we see that within Threadless a lot too, just when the, in the artist submitting. Some artists will submit a design, get bad feedback about it, and give up, you know? Some artists submit a design, get bad feedback, and that's fuel to give them fuel for them to keep trying and work harder. Um, so I think it's a kind of a personality type too, yeah. where does failure discourage you or encourage you? Mm -hmm. I think different people react different ways to yeah. it. I guess it's also about being an artist, because now I'm also a musician. Um, and I guess also when you deliver something that's very close to you, then maybe you're more sensitive to you know, the, the critics, and, and that may provoke some strong reaction from some of the artists if they get some negative comments maybe yeah uh, definitely yeah. to me i see that as almost like a benefit right if you if you go through the process of making the thing and putting it out there and learn that it's not good that then okay now you can move on to the next thing like you learn that and um and that, that's something even though it didn't work out you can add it to your experiences and learn from it yeah. grow great so what is your future plan for threadless um, <laughs> well, we don't. <laughs> we want to just keep. Well, what I'm thinking a lot about now is um, over the past 10 years, we've been mostly making t shirts and mostly selling them from threadless.com. And I feel like our community can make so much more than t shirts, and we can find places to um, distribute them and more than just threadless.com and make it just more of an impactful thing for the artists by having them be everywhere, you know, um, and on more products. So that's what I'm working on right now. Yeah, that sounds very wonderful. Thank you so much for taking your time for this interview. And yeah, let's you. go out and make yes. a lot more stuff. That's right. <laughs> Whatever it is. Get it out of your head. Exactly. Thank you. Thanks. That's all for me today, Rebuild 21 with interesting interviews and I do hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, remember to sign up with your emails or follow me on Facebook and Twitter to know more about what's happening with Make Change TV in the future. That's it, so thanks for watching and remember to smile and shine. Bye! To know more about what's coming up, in the next shows as well. I can kick myself in the ass right now. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. <laughs>